Hey everyone, it's Danielle and it is time for the word. We are starting a brand new series today called In The Lab. And this term, we are putting a microscope over a bunch of different miracles from the Bible. And I just know you are going to be blessed by it because I have been as we've been preparing for it. And I have a great one to start us off today. But before we get into it, I have a question for you. Have you ever hidden and then tried to jump out and scare someone before? My family loves to do a good jump scare, a good sneak attack. We often will like hide behind doors and then jump out at each other. But the other day I was with my friend Denisha. We were getting ready um, for Sunday. We were busy setting up and we were moving some things from one room to another room. And I entered this one room right at the end after we'd finished before she did. And I had sort of stepped behind the door, not really thinking that she wasn't going to see me. And so I'm standing there, not really thinking that I might scare her. And she starts to walk into the room just as I step out to go and ask her a question. And she got the biggest fright. Her eyes went like this big and she fell to the floor in a massive fright. And I'll be honest, I actually found it really, really funny, even though I hadn't intentionally meant to scare her. I was like crying. I was laughing so hard. But in that moment, I learned something important. I learned that the trick to the perfect jump scare, the trick to the perfect sneak attack is surprise. And it's also being super quiet. We are starting this week with a pretty epic miracle from the book of Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. You would think that they would have had to be super quiet for what they were about to do, for what God had planned. But in actual fact, God had them do the complete opposite. 40 years after God led his family out of Egypt and through the desert, he chose a man named Joshua to lead them to a pretty amazing, pretty beautiful home called Canaan. Canaan wasn't their home yet, though. Not really. People lived there already in a big city named Jericho. And these people had heard about how God had parted the Red Sea for them. And they'd heard about how God had rained food for, down from heaven and how God had led them by fire and by cloud just to get them to this promised land. And they realized that if God wanted his family to move into Canaan, then he would do it. And he would do something pretty remarkable to get them there. So they were ready for an epic fight. The Bible tells us that because they were ready for this epic fight, they shut the big gates to the city and they locked them. Nobody could get in and nobody could get out. God knew that Jericho looked scary to the Israelites because of these big walls. So as they camped out outside, wondering how they were going to get through the big city walls of Jericho, it, when it was time to go, God reminded Joshua that he was in control. This is what God told him. He gave him these words. He said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua might have felt afraid, but in that moment, God gave him courage to keep pushing and he knew that God was always with him. Then one night, Joshua was sleeping in the camp that the Israelites had made outside of these walls. And he woke up to this man standing over him with this big giant sword and Joshua didn't recognize him. This is what the Bible says. It says, now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. At that moment, Joshua realized that it was God appearing to him as a soldier. How amazing is that? And so he fell on his face and he worshiped him. God was 
definitely with him and he knew then in that moment for sure that God would lead them into Jericho, no matter how impossible it seemed with those big walls surrounding the city. And after that, God told Joshua just how to get through those walls, just how he was going to perform the miracle. I'm going to show you. Why don't you stand up to your feet right now, whether you're at the back or at the front. I need you to stand all the way up for this part. Here is what he told Joshua to do. He said, march around the city once every day for six days. Can you guys march on the spot just like this, just as a soldier? This is what they had to do. They had to march around the big city for six days. Then he told them to have seven priests get trumpets made out of ram's horns and carry them. Can you guys pretend to pick up and carry your trumpets and keep marching? Keep marching on the spot. On the seventh day, God told them to march around the city seven times. The priests should blow the trumpets during the march. And when they blow a long blast, all the men should shout and then the walls would fall. Why don't we march on the spot? And when you hear the trumpets, I need you to do the loudest shout of praise that you can. Are you ready? Keep marching. Great job. It happened just like that. You guys can grab a seat now. That is exactly what happened. Joshua might have wondered how walking and yelling would make the walls fall. But he didn't question God. He trusted him. He trusted that God would fight that battle. So he chose to obey. And guess what? When that last trumpet sounded, the walls crashed to the ground with a massive boom and a massive rumble. God promised not to leave his family. And he didn't. He helped them get through an impossible wall and move into their beautiful new home. God not only did a great miracle that day, but he proved to the Israelites that he would fight their battles. And I believe that God can fight my battles too. Can you repeat that after me? I believe God can fight my battles. Great job. That's right. I believe that we follow a God of miracles and that that God of miracles can fight our battles just like he did when he helped the Israelites fight that one. God is always by our side. He never leaves us. We don't have to fear. We can be strong and courageous because we can trust that he can and he will fight our battles for us if we let him. That means that when mum and dad are fighting at home, we can pray and God can show up and he can fight that battle on our behalf. It means that when we have things to do, like maybe say a speech at school, and we're feeling a little bit scared and a little bit nervous about what people might think or, or what they're gonna think about what we're saying, that means that we can pray and God can fight that battle. He can give us the courage to keep going, even when we don't think that we've got what it takes. And it means that if you're having nightmares and you find it really hard to sleep at night and you're just being tormented by these things going on in your head, it means that you can stop and we can pray. And the Bible tells us that if we speak the name of Jesus over our nightmares, if we speak the name of Jesus over those things, that they have to leave under His authority. Why don't we take some time to pray and ask God to come and fill us and come and meet us in the battles that we might be facing right now. Why don't you guys bow your heads and close your eyes. And while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, no one's looking. If you're facing a battle that you're finding really hard to fight on your own right now, if you've got something really big happening in your world and you don't quite know what to do with it, why don't you raise your hand? There are hands going up all over every room listening to this message. Right now, we're going to ask God to come and meet us in those battles. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much that you love us. We thank you so much that you always have us in mind. I pray for all of the kids that have their hands raised, Lord God, all of the leaders that have their hands raised. God, I ask you to come and fill them. 
with your love and peace right now in this moment. Lord God, I thank you for being the kind of God that we can turn to and trust to fight our battles. God, I ask you to come and meet us in our circumstances that we're facing, in our battles, and we ask you to fight on our behalf. I pray for all of the kids in every room, Lord God. I pray that you would give them a boldness and a courage, and I ask that you would remove any fear that they are carrying. And I pray that you would give them words to say as they pray each night, to speak over their minds and their hearts, to remind them that you are in control and you are always fighting our battles. We love you, Lord, and we commit all of this into your hands, in your name. And everyone said, Amen. See you guys next time.